Stay tuned. This is Best in Business with Manny Lopez on Radio Latino Inc. We are to live our lives accordingly, striving to be agents of change as we attempt to leave this world a better place than we found us. Ladies and gents, welcome to Best in Business with Manny Lopez, where passion becomes success. I'm your host, Mr. Too Blessed to be Stressed, broadcasting live on Radio Latino Inc. Latino Inc. Latino Inc. Latino Inc. We are live from the Equitable Building in Los Angeles on RadioLatinoInc.com. This is Best in Business. I am Manny Lopez, and today we are going to learn incredible stories from amazing leaders in business who are making a difference in more ways than one. Now, each week, I bring you access to my friends, my clients, and the incredible people I meet along this journey we call life. You know, a wise man once told me, you are the same today as you will be in five years from now except for two things, the people you meet and the books you read. I believe that to be very true. In the last five years, I've transformed into a new being because of this concept. I've been able to be in the same room, shoulder to shoulder, with some of the most influential people of our time. I've been invited to dinners with US presidents and billionaires. I regularly attend and co-host galas, events, and seminars looking for just one thing, to connect with people who want to serve. The biggest key to success I've learned along my journey. Today you will meet some great examples of people who serve. Now, when you understand the concept of serving, like I do, you'll be blessed with the opportunities that you wouldn't be able to create on your own. There are many out there who have the education and resources you need to turn your dreams into reality. Here's the 60 seconds of what I did. The first thing I implemented was to become a sponge for knowledge. That dream you hold on to can only be accomplished if you become an expert at what you do. Whether you love to paint, dance, sing, drive fast cars, drive slow cars, whatever you're into, pick something. Something that you love to do. Learn anything and everything about that subject. If you love it, it should never feel like work. If you need help in finding that, just look at what makes you happy. What are your current hobbies? Can that be your dream? The next step is to find a mentor. Someone who's been where you are, is now where you want to be, and is willing to teach you the steps to get there. Today you're gonna to meet some experts that you may call a mentor one day, and they're gonna show you what they did to create the success that they have. We're also broadcasting live on Facebook. To find our video feed, just use the hashtag Best in Business on Radio Latino Inc. And come join the conversation. Now we're taking questions and I want to hear from you. Yes, you, the one listening to my voice right now. You think you got on this broadcast by accident? Think again. Everything happens for a reason. You will learn something new that you can apply in your life today if you pay close attention to what we're going to share on this show right now. Today is Monday, June 5th, 2017, and boy, what a show we have for you today. In the house, co-hosting with me today, we've got Vanessa Orozco, one of only five women that own a tequila company. She's making sure that this is no longer just a man's world in the tequila industry. Today, she's bringing in some of her famous tequila and sharing her incredible story of how this brand got started. Also on today's broadcast, we've got the one and only Frank Shankowitz creator and co-founder of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, along with being a best-selling author and is named by Forbes as the number one keynote speaker for 2016 worldwide. He'll be with us today to share his amazing story of how he started the Make-A-Wish Foundation and also shed some light on some details of his upcoming feature film, Wish Man, a biopic about the life of Frank Shanklitz. So let's dive right in. Vanessa, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Definitely. This is going to be a fun show today. So we've got Frank Shankowitz uh, coming on very shortly. Uh, right now, though, I want to dive a little bit in to Vanessa. So um, look at this tequila bottle. Let me see this real quick. 
So we're going to scoot her over towards your wing. Yes, yes. So if you guys can hear me, you can, you can hear this little thing here. That's this big, heavy tequila bottle. This thing is beautiful. You're watching on Facebook. Let me show you here. It's got uh, this, like, silhouette. I mean, what would you describe this as? I would describe her as real women have curves. So real women have real curves. Women have they curves. definitely do. They definitely do. That is a true story. But this is a beautiful bottle. Now, I saw this bottle recently at an event. Uh, she was she had a booth at this event, and she was showcasing this amazing tequila. I actually got a taste of it, so it's really tasty, very smooth. And uh, there's a bunch of different colors. It comes in red. It comes in gold, I think, right? So we have the red, white, and blue. Red, white, red, and, white blue. and blue. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was a white color, not a gold color. My 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 color is a it little. It looked a little gold, but it's red, white, and blue. It's a beautiful, beautiful bottle. So you guys got to check out. Where can they actually find this this tequila? What's it called? So our tequila is called Gaviota Tequila, which means seagull and it represents a bird. And we have over 300 accounts. Um, we're currently only in the state of California. So I don't know every single account off the top of my head. That'd be too much to remember. But you can go on our website and you can actually look at the list of where you can enjoy the tequila and where you can purchase the tequila as well. Awesome. What would you say is probably the biggest known place that you're at? The biggest known, I would say, is Vallarta Supermarkets. That's the one that automatically everyone says, oh, I totally know who Vallarta Supermarkets. And they have over, um, I believe it's like 45 locations, all the way from Southern California to Northern California. Oh, wow. So you, you're you definitely expanding very rapidly. Definitely, yeah. So some people ask, do you have it in Bakersfield? We do, and you would actually have to find it at the Vallarta Supermarkets. Awesome, awesome. Um, are they able to purchase this online or does it have to be in, in a store? You can purchase online through one of our retailers. So we actually don't do it, but we do outsource it um, through one of our retailers. Awesome, awesome. So this company started how, how many years ago? So a, a little on the story. So my father has been in the tequila business for about 20 years now. He used to import and distribute other people's brands. And eventually he said, you know, why am I working for someone else when I can create my own brand and do my own thing? This is when he came to me and he said, hey, Vanessa, I have an idea in mind. Let's create a tequila. Um, obviously, when we thought about creating a tequila, if you think about tequila, it's matcha dominated industry. Yeah. And when we thought about that, we said, how can we be different? How can we cater to women? Obviously, me being a young millennial and coming into the picture, that's where the whole story came about and we launched the tequila about four years ago four years ago. so very recently oh wow yeah still baby it's funny is that the same reason he started the company was the same reason i started my company uh -huh. i didn't want to build anyone else's dream anymore i right. wanted to start building my own exactly and uh and i saw my skill set and you know my mentor at the time would always tell me the same thing is mm -hmm. you know you should be owning a company you should be right. you know building your own dreams not building somebody else's exactly dream. cool so when you started working in the business, what would you say is one of the biggest challenges that you had initially? I think one of the biggest challenges is being a woman in a male-dominated industry. Um, obviously, the tequila industry, I want to say it's maybe like 98% male-dominated industry. So for a woman to come in, not only being a woman, but being a young woman. You know, you, I would walk into meetings and I was the only woman in a room full of men. And not that they don't take you seriously, but they look at you differently. You know, they kind of say, well, she's young. She's a woman. What does she bring to the table and what does she know about the industry? Well, that's great. She has a beautiful bottle, but let's see what she can bring. That was in the beginning. Now, obviously, I'm respected in the industry. Now, I'm very well known in the industry, but it was a very, very big challenge to, as a woman, to break into a very macho dominated industry. Oh, I see, definitely. I mean, that, and it, that happens with a lot of different industries out there. It's just you, you're going out there trying to make a name for yourself right. and just, you know, how you look or what your name is or what your yeah. last name is mm -hmm. could be, you know, helping you or hurting you and mm -hmm. the different opportunities that you're trying to create for yourself. Right. What would you say has been the biggest influence that you've had in this entrepreneur um, lifestyle that you're choosing? Um, well, I would say my dad is my biggest influence. Uh, you know, he really, he really believed in me. He really pushed me. When I started the business, you know, I told my dad, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. I've never done this before. Obviously, I was not an entrepreneur before. I was a nine to five person working a regular job. Um, so he really pushed and really believed in me and said, you know what, you can do it. This is your project. You know, you're investing your time, your heart, your soul, and 
And yeah, definitely my dad is my biggest influence. Awesome. And do you read any books? I love to read, but I don't like to read just any books. I'm all okay. about growing and empowering myself and I'm all about adding knowledge to my life. So if a book doesn't add value to me, then I don't want to read it. So it's all about motivational books, empowerment books, um, you know, life skill books. One of my biggest uh, favorite authors is Stephen Covey, The okay. Seven Habits yeah. of Highly Effective People. Um, I have a few girlfriends that just launched their books and I love reading their books as well. Um, but yeah, definitely anything that adds value to my life. Awesome. And then what would you say would be, I would say that one of the easiest things that's come doing business. One of the easiest. Because a lot of people listening right now, they may not um, actually own a business yet. Maybe they're mm -hmm. scared into jumping into mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. And it's scary. Um, it is. It's definitely it's scary. scary. I mean, you have to create your own paycheck. Otherwise, it's just, it's not happening. Right. right? Mm -hmm. You could become homeless because you just definitely. don't have a good month. Right. So what would you say has been something that could ease that stress for people that may be listening right now that want to get into their own? I mean, I think anything is possible as long as you believe in yourself. There is that big factor of fear, but I think if you put that fear aside and you really follow what you know how to do and what you really have a passion for, I think when it comes to owning your business and being an entrepreneur, it's not just um, you know following the bandwagon. You know, they make money, I want to open up a franchise or I want to open up a restaurant because everybody else is doing it. Yeah. You really have to go in it with your heart and soul and really, really believe in what you're doing um, and really have a passion for it because if there's no passion and you don't have your heart into it, most likely it's really not going to work and you're going to wonder why it didn't work. Yeah. Exactly. Now, I want to get into the question of how you in this brand was able to beat out all the other te tequila companies to get your uh, business in Vallarta for, for one, on top of the other places that you mm -hmm. have as well. Mm -hmm. Before I do that though, Frank Shankowitz has been messaging me all yes. uh, this Let's whole time. So in. let me see what, what he needs right now. And uh, he might be trying to call in right now to get on. So let me just get this real quick. Go check my live stream because this is where he's messaging on. Okay, so he, yes, he is definitely trying to call in. And we'll have him on the show very shortly. So let's, while we're getting that situated, what would you say, um, I mean, how, how did the whole Vallarta thing come about? So the whole Vallarta, and it's actually a very interesting story. That was my very, very first experience doing sales. Um, my father said, you know what, Vanessa, we, we have to go big or go home. So let's try and see if we can get in, um, to Ayata supermarkets, which out here in California, they're one of the very biggest and well-known supermarkets. Um, so we made an appointment with the buyer. We we walked in, um, wonderful gentleman. But of course, being a buyer for such a big store, he has to question, you know, what you have, what you're bringing into the table. Um, so we walked into the meeting with him, and then. You know, we sat there and I was a little nervous, didn't know how to do sales, and my dad kind of pushed me in there and we sat there for about 30 minutes. He really liked our bottle. I think it, it was more about we're bringing something different to the table. Um, if you notice in the tequila industry, everybody has generic bottles, everything kind of looks the same. There's really nothing out there that stands out. Not only that, but there's really nothing out there that really caters to um, the female industry yeah. of the tequila world cool so i think from from what hearing that the biggest takeaway was to be different very was different. to be very, very something unique in the unique. industry mm -hmm. exactly so having something that is not the same as everybody else i think is definitely what's really helped you um stand stand different amongst definitely. the crowd so this definitely. way they could really find out exactly how to be successful right. in your industry because it's it's more than just um, having a good a good taste there's, of tequila. Yeah, there's so much more. I mean, there's so many tequilas out in the industry that are wonderful. Their profiles are really good. The bottles are good looking. You know, there, there's so much competition and keep in mind that the tequila industry, it is a very saturated industry. There is over 2,000 brands, brands of tequila. Not a lot of people realize that. but what makes us different is that we cater to 
a very virgin niche of market, right? Mm -hmm. No one was catering to women when it came to the tequila industry. And here we come along, and not only that, but here comes a young millennial woman who owns the company. So made it very different. They always thought that it was gonna be a man behind the company, and once they realized this beautiful bottle, great taste and profile, here comes along this young girl who owns the company. Wow, made nice. a big difference. Mm-hmm. So explain to me how you grew up. I mean, what, what was a typical day in the life of Vanessa? How I, you know, I had a really great childhood. Um, I'm very blessed to have an amazing family, both my mom and dad, which I know they're probably watching. Um, I'm very thankful for them. They really took their time to, you know, to take us to school, to go to parent meetings, uh, you know, to really raise us in a good environment. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, were you born and raised in the valley, you know, were you guys rich because you guys have a business. Guess what you guys know, we were not. My dad actually came to this country as an immigrant and he worked three and four jobs at a time. The times that we would see my dad was, you know, Saturdays and Sundays, probably even only Sundays. So we really were raised in an environment that you really had to work hard for what you want. Nothing comes free. No one is gonna hand you anything. Uh, Not only that, but my dad really wanted to raise um, powerful women because he knew that in this world it is it is a man's world and he really wanted us to to pursue our dreams and goals and he always pushed us whether it was to go to college or own your own business whatever it was that we wanted to do he always told us follow your heart and just really be true to yourself so that was kind of my upbringing nice okay so I hear a lot of talk about your dad and, and him yes. being a great influence to you yes. tell us about tell us about your mother because I know I'm gonna get that question a lot because that's what <laughs> happened last week is we had a guest on we talked about their dad and their dad and their dad and their dad and then when I got off I uh-huh. got questions like you asked about the mom we want to know about the mom what yeah. happened with that so I'll touch base on my mom also my mom she's words come short I love my mom my mom is she's my best friend she's been the one that all the stress that I go through because owning your business it is stressful she's the one that I cry to she's the one that I talk to she genuinely really is my best friend she knows me in and out growing up um she was always my backbone she was my dad's backbone she didn't work she was a stay-at-home mom but let me tell you she she worked very hard because being a stay-at-home mom is a job in itself she was the one making sure the food was on the table the groceries were in the house the house was clean if my dad needed anything you know she was behind him 100 percent. and i think that's what made my dad a very successful man because to be a successful man you have to have a great woman behind you or vice versa my dad was that man for my mom they were just a great couple they've been together for oh my gosh 37 years now married yeah so you know seeing their success both my dad and my mom is I believe what made me successful but yeah my mom is a phenomenal stay-at-home mom very strong woman um, you know very dedicated to her family so you know just just a great woman all around another key to success right there people is a foundation, foundation of example. If you want to be, or you want to create greatness in your offspring, your kids, uh, the kids that you mentor, maybe just people around in your life cycle, right. be that example for them. Show them that you have the ability to create greatness inside exactly. of you as well. Exactly. And not just you know read books or you know complain that somebody else has got a better opportunity than you. Yeah, we so, all have opportunities. We all have that chance. So. Exactly. I mean, it, 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 for myself, growing up as well, I didn't grow up with money. We grew up poor and, and you know, bounced around home to home and, and found a way to create success because mm-hmm. I said I can do it. Mm-hmm. I found a mentor that believed in me that said, Manny, yes, you can do it. Yes, you have the ability right. to create whatever you want and be whatever you want. All you have to do is make that decision and go for it. And even at that point, you know, even if you have a mentor, because I've had great mentors aside from people mm-hmm. in my family, it starts within you yeah. you have to find that fire that light that shines within you and if you don't find it within you there is no one humanly possible in this world that's going to take it out in you if you don't find it in yourself exactly yeah. that's good stuff all right so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna take a quick break we're gonna uh we're gonna check on frank shankowitz he's been messaging me on the live stream here so i gotta get that and get him on the show he's trying to call in right now so we're gonna get a couple minutes we're going to get right back on. We'll have Frank Schenkowitz on the line, and we'll be right back with Vanessa Orozco sharing more insights of success on Best in Business. I'll see you guys in just a minute. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. This is Best in Business with Manny Lopez on Radio Latino Inc. <laughs> 